Hi, I'm here today with Karen Yarbrough, uh, the Cook County Clerk and Recorder. Um, her deputy, John Murkovic, is her data wizard that has come on my show to talk a little bit about election, cybersecurity, and some other interesting topics. Uh, John, thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having us, Lee. So uh, we we're talking, uh, the clerk and I were talking a little bit about Microsoft's Open Election Guard, and I, I wanted to get your take on what's happening with that. If you could tell everyone what the platform's about and what brought this about in terms of Microsoft's involvement. Yeah, this, this is, uh, we're, we're pretty excited about this, and one reason our, our vendor is participating. So generally, this, this is an idea to to build really the best voting machine out there or kind of establish the, the software and hardware standards for that, that uh, the government would like uh, jurisdictions across the country to adopt really open source standards. So, so what this is about is, as you know, in open source, it's about you know, doing all the work on the front end, publishing your, your code and your setups and, and inviting the world to, to attack it and try and penetrate it. So our, our vendor is, is working with this system. We, we, are, we are monitoring the, the progress. It's, it's moving a little slow, but you know, we're excited that there's finally people talking about open source in government because it's, yeah. it's really the most important. Well, and it's good too, because essentially you're, you're putting the spotlight on the system. So if there's a bug, everyone's talking about it online and it gets fixed, it's transparent. And what I like the best about this is it creates a potential for all these, uh, all these clerks and other parties responsible for uh, voting to be able to capture and preserve those votes and introduce technology to, to allow people to verify that their vote was cast as intended. Yeah, exactly. And um, a lot of offices across the country don't have enough resources to, to get the equipment that they want. There are, there are a lot of states that vote only on electronic machines, which is, is frightening, really. And it's, it's kind of the worst system to have. So any kind of sharing of resources is vital for government to be able to quickly get the entire country mm -hmm. up to the same standard. So John, has the federal government been helping uh, get Cook County ready for the next election, election cycle? And if so, you know, what, what has the federal government's role been with assisting you? Yeah, they, they've been a great partner, both uh, Department of Homeland Security and the FBI. You know, we, it is a true partnership because you know, we, we have adequate resources here, so we're able to implement a lot of the cutting edge stuff that they would like to see across the country. So they, they, we're almost like a pilot a laboratory, really. They, they're, they're in our office on election day, monitoring the systems, checking how all the cyber security systems work, any, any th real time threat sharing. So yeah, we, we in Cook County are, are considered to be you know, amongst the top 1% of, of performers in the country, and we're happy to you know, help spread that information to other jurisdictions. Okay, now uh, last time uh, when you and I had lunch, you were telling me a little bit about some of your, your work in the blockchain space and some of your ideas for how you thought blockchain might be able to help uh, recorder, recorder offices everywhere with using uh, blockchain technology to record deeds. Can you, can you tell a little bit about what that, what the, the premise is behind that and explain to people how that can revolutionize recording of deeds? Yeah, yeah, it, it sort of ties into elections too. Uh, you know, the most famous blockchain out there is Bitcoin. And, and Bitcoin works so well because it's only designed to do one thing, which is transfer numbers from one ledger to another. So really being inspired, you know, not only by the technological ability to protect that using hashing algorithms and digital signatures, but just the general idea on, on architecturing software in the same manner. And, uh, you know, Clerk Yarbrough said before, it's like back to the future. Technology doesn't always have to be about adding more features. And, you know, generally when you build products in committees or groups, mm -hmm. no one's happy and the compromise is never what anyone wants. So in election security, there can be no compromises. We have to have the best. So, so blockchain, you know, is a way to digitally guarantee certain outcomes. So, you know, it's not quite ready for elections yet, though there have been some experiments with it. It is, it's great technology for land records, and uh, but really, if only if it's applied on a large scale, from to protect the entire transaction. So, so blockchain is a way to wrap. A, a expensive, important transaction in, in cybersecurity and ensure that it works out. 
So, so um, right now, I, I, I know it's common if people are trying to research property records, they'll come down to the, the recorder's office, go into the basement, sometimes look through microfiche and, and something. Is there, is there a likelihood that if this technology gets adopted, you know, kind of universally, that all those old records will be retroactively kind of put back out onto the blockchain so that they exist in cyberspace? Yeah, that's a great question, one that we get a lot. Uh, in some smaller counties, you would probably be able to do that. Cook County, unfortunately, has, has way too many records in, in various states of, of microfilm, and you know, to get those on there would actually require the, the same types of effort that create bad data in the first place, which is rekeying data entry. Mm -hmm. So the, the, really the best approach, if we were to switch to such a system, would be you know, like the county used to insure title for certain transactions. Mm -hmm. so. In those cases, we could, you know, look at the transaction if, if, you know, insure over any risks from the 1950s and 60s. Mm -hmm. We know we know what else is out there from, you know, the 50s in, in kind of electronic format. So, it's it's too tough to get it all into the same system. But you know, when you when you think about how these systems work, you know, if you have a legacy database and a distributed database, it's all feeding to one website, right? Mm -hmm. So the public. You know, when they go and do that research, they're not really going to see the background, whether it's a, a distributed database or, or a centralized database. So it's, it's all about how you deliver the information to the people. Well, thanks so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you.